and welcome once again to Blender today live. Please let me know if everything is okay. I just reinstalled my whole computer like a couple hours ago while I was preparing dinner. Great decision to take on a Monday where actually we have to get together to see a bunch of stuff that is new. It's, it's, I can't just call it, th thanks for the, hands up, for the thumbs up. I can't just name one thing that it was added this week because there were so many and it's just little things here and there. Um, uh, one of them, actually we already seen it last week. There was the update to Grease Pencil with support for armatures. So the thing that we saw last week is now on uh, 2.8. So everybody can use it before you have to build it. I think I mentioned it last week, but there was one comment that, uh, hey, where, where is the armature? It doesn't work. Well, it, uh, it, it wasn't there yet. It was on a branch. So today it's actually there in Blender today. Um, there's also a bunch of UI interface stuff, uh, workspaces, uh, little thing is in the outliner, overlays. So uh, a few updates all over the board. I still haven't uh, haven't had time to make a video for the YouTube developers channel, but uh, like one of those nice short videos to down to the point. So let, let's talk about it here. Let's get some feedback and then I'm gonna make one during this week with all of those updates. And uh, yeah, let, let's let's get to it. Thank you for tuning in, by the way. If you, it's the first, the first time you're here, it's uh, this is Blender Today Live. We get together for one hour every Monday to see what's new in Blender Today um, Live. <laughs> so one is something that it's new, it's not related to Blend. Well, it's sort of related to Blender. It's uh, Cartoon Brew has this very nice article. I'm not gonna um, spend a lot of time in it, but uh, it, it shows the, the possibilities of 2D with 3D. And in one of them, it's naming Grease Pencil, the demo that uh, the Blender team uh, was giving at Annecy this year. So it's a pretty nice read. You should check it out. Uh, it's in Carton Brew. And that's it. Let, let's, let's move on. Let's see the list, the news, because it's Monday. Like every Monday, there is a developers meeting. So we will see here. Oops, not the CVS, the committers here. There. Welcome. September, by the way, what, what, what happened with the year? All right. So beta continues. Yes. There is a new, actually, um, yeah, the beta thingy we, we know, we know things continue. There is a new, um, cloth setting It's a, it's an angular bending thingy that I haven't tested. So I'm not gonna spend time here boring you with, with this, uh, bothering you with this, but, um, there's a bunch of new things that I should test. Check it out and make a video on the developers channel. But just make just, just to mention that there is new stuff on the cloth solver in Blender. Isn't that amazing? Cloth is getting some love, some much reserved love. So Grease Pencil, yes, added by the man himself, Antonio Vasquez, and um, with uh, support from Algorith and every all the other developers just to to get it ready for um for the I almost say master, Blender 2.8, which is almost master nowadays. It would, it should be master. I think by the point of the beta, it should be master. And there should be like a safe version of 279.5, whatever we are now, uh, save just for that. Um, yeah, updates on the billboard. There is uh, some updates, some libraries got updated. This doesn't mean anything for pretty much anyone, unless you have like a very, very, very old, uh, Linux, for example, Windows has it. Um, Linux, the last, I think Ubuntu 16 or so should already have it. Um, there is a, just a little uh, update in one, uh, leave, leave G. Um, you, you should, you should check it out. <laughs> but basically it has a new version, but all the, the most recent ver than the Linux version have it. And for Mac OS, it's being worked on it apparently. But actually today, I, I I just mentioned that I wiped my whole computer this afternoon, and I just installed the brand new. Um, I, I it saved all my settings, so I only wiped the system. But I needed to install all the libraries, so actually I did it, and I was like, I should make a video about this, about compiling on Linux. But it's it's really so simple that I don't know if I it, it like I could make a video about it. But it's literally you download the source, and there is a. Um, and a script that is called install depths, you run that and that is good to go. But I can make a video more clear about this. I actually was here because I wanted to see if uh, 
I have the latest, you know, because we, we deal with the latest stuff here in Blender today. So git pull. Yes, already I have to date. So who was the brave developer? Willem added some object viewport display panel. Nice. More grid flow from Willem. Clement crash. Look, he was fixing a crash with the AMD and Windows 7. Isn't that awesome? And there was a, a fix also for like a more um, uh, Intel graphics, 530 and 540. So yes, all the different hardware is getting love. Now that the, the time has come to make it work, make work, uh, EV work and 2.8 with more different hardware. So that's always good news. Let's open Blender, shall we? I'm, I'm going fast this. I'm trying to go as fast as possible because I would like to spend more time on the questions. So, okay, I'm gonna save this because um, I'm gonna make it a bit larger for you. Ah, one thing that I didn't change was the, there you go, the F keys in this new system. Um, interface, slightly bigger. So we can fit more thing and help the short-sighted like me <laughs> to see better. All right, so let's go through what's the what's what's new here. First of all, cheers, people. Opa, it hanged. All right, let's get to it. So. Where to begin? I have a little here thing. I've been writing down all the things that I wanted to talk about Blender today. Well, one is a, an easy one. It's an overlay setting. So this has been asked for a while now since, basically since the face dots were removed in face um, select mode. So what I mean with this is when you have multiple like faces like this, and if you are in, for example, in vertex select mode, you can see the vertices, very nice. If you are in edge select, there was basically no difference, but now, bam, could you tell the difference? It's basically thicker, let, let, let's try with a monkey, but monkey never disappoints here. So let's make it bigger here. So let's see. If I select vertices, um, sorry, edges, edge selection, the edges become slightly thicker, so they are easier to spot when you are. Uh, that's the idea. So when you can that you can select them. If you have both vertices and edges, then you see both things at the same time. If you have faces, though, there was basically no way to um, tell them apart. In 2.7, you will have a dot inside of the, uh, of the face. And in 2.8, the idea is that that face, since, since you wouldn't tell, like since you're in edge select mode, edges will be thicker. And in vertex select mode, um, the vertices will be visible. Then it kind of means that you wouldn't really need to have anything for the faces. Uh, this is arguable, uh, good decision to keep things cleaner um, in 2.7 if you had a for example a monkey here and you were in face select mode um, when after a, a certain size you can't even like let let's load the factory settings after a certain zoom it doesn't become useful any anymore um, the those dots here you see you just you just lose them and then it, it's more noisy than you actually it doesn't help that much. But in some cases, it's very useful because if you have, uh, for example, if you delete a face and you want to tell if this face is the, the center dot, it was here in the back or in the front, or if you have like a mess of a mesh, for example, you have a face between these two faces, then you wouldn't know really well if there was like, for example, if you have something very nasty, like, um, like let's see here between this you had a face an internal face here i don't know if it's visible but i have one um let's turn x-ray so basically if you had this face and then you had two faces in front then it meant selection is a bit uh, weird here 
that you couldn't tell if there was a floating face there, but it is now because the dot in center of the face, it's actually visible when you are in, um, not in X-ray, but when you, um, we are, when you're not in X-ray or when you are in X-ray, actually it's visible right there. So this setting has having a bit of uh, controversial because it was just removed, but now the good news is that it's back and it's an option that is in mesh edit mode and it's called center. Basically it will always draw the center regardless of the mode that you're in. So you would see it. And here it's very hard to see actually. That must be a bug because I see it here, but I don't see it down here. But I see it when I turn, hmm, maybe it's too small. Let's go to my theme and uh, to the default theme, which also happens to be my theme. There you go, I need to make it slightly bigger and still it's not showing on these faces. Look, huh, okay, that's silly. Hmm, I'm gonna save this file and send it to the developers. Um, if only there was a shortcut for saving, there you go. And I'm just gonna put it here, Blender, I'm just gonna save it as face bug, there you go. Sorry about that. It's a bug. We found it. I'm going to report it and uh, hopefully it gets fixed by next week. Another thing that was added um, besides the edges that I mentioned here is about the tool system. And it's, I thought I set my startup settings here. Save startup settings. There you go. Um, is the tooltips. So now when you hover, on the tools, the tooltips are actually useful because they <laughs> they weren't before. It will give you like a like a, um, um, like a generic tooltip for all the tools. Now they actually take the tool from the tool if if it's defined. Otherwise, it will take it from the operator itself. So there could be like two levels of uh, of um, tooltips. Not only that, but also the shortcuts are displayed. So for example, not the shortcut. This can be a bit confusing and we are still working on it. So there is two ways to access instant tools. One is here by clicking the, the tool on the sidebar. And then the other one is by with the shortcut by hitting spacebar and then either the number or the tool uh, shortcut that it has assigned. So you do spacebar and then you enable it right here. You could argue that it's not really needed all the time. Like if you already know that G is for grabbing, why would you like press two G and then move it and then activate it when G is just, so the, those, that concept we still are working on it. We're going to keep trying things. We're still in alpha, so we can try these new things. Speaking of trying, there's an experimental feature being was added this uh, this week. And it's something that a lot of people here in um, Blender today was, was asking for. I asked a few times already and it was, yeah, it was like a popular demand to get, to have it tested. Basically it's same way in, no, not the same way, almost the same way that in Blender 2.7 um, to select, yeah, yeah, you heard it. It's the select and deselect drama. So in 2.7, there is no way to select everything with one shortcut, like with like hitting one key. There's no way you can. Um, the way to select everything is to press a once and then a again, which is far from effective. Ah, yes, I got used to it just like you, just like everyone. I spending 15 years working on 16 years using Blender and yes, I got used to it, but it like, it's not really the most efficient thing because there's no direct way to, to select it. And now that I use, I go back to 2.7, it's just kind of annoying that you press a and you lose your selection and then you, you have to select, you have to do it twice. So if you want to go back to your selection, you have to undo two steps. So you lose two undo steps out of the 64 or well, in case you have it that limit. But anyway, now in 2.8 for a while now, there has been a shortcut to 
select everything, which is the A key. So that will select everything. Then the shortcut for this selection was added for um, consistency with other tools. So the same way you hide with H and you unhide with Alt H, well, the same was added for selection. So A for selection, Alt A for this selection. But that will break the workflow for other people. Yes, because you're used to, to it. And it's also a nice, fast way to do it. Like I really like, I think Blender, I mean, it's, it's quite innovative in that regard, like using a double key for doing an action. So that was brought back to 2.8 as an experiment for the time being. So in order to deselect, in order to select, you can press A and in order to deselect, you double tap A. So basically it's the same as before, it's inverted basically because here you start by deselecting and then selecting. And in 2.8, you select once and then uh, select, do it again to um, deselect. It counts as like a double click. So you have to do it at a certain speed. Like if you do it now and then again, it doesn't work, but it, you have to do it at a certain speed. Another thing that Blender 2.7 had with its toggle is that if you select, um, for example, you have all the objects, but you have one off the screen, right? And then you select a few, then if you want to select everything, it will first deselect and then select that I already explained. But if you had everything selected already, and then you press A, it will deselect. So it's like a toggle, it detects if everything is selected and then it will deselect. So without any visual clue, because maybe the objects that are selected on uh, outside of the screen, the same shortcut is doing two different things. Like sometimes it takes one key to deselect and then sometimes it takes um, two keys to deselect. So I think this is a bit more consistent. It skips the, the, the the, the speed of the, the previous workflow, but you can still Alt A to deselect. And uh, yeah, it's an experiment that was added. <clears throat> All right, so I mentioned face center overlay, thicker overlays, thicker edges overlay. And uh, now let's see the workspace setting. So if you have noticed in the blender of the last few days, there is a missing button here in the uh, in the header. So the workspace settings was introduced um, uh, early in the, the development of Blender 2.8 on the workspaces. So basically it was a context properties tab here to control, to change everything regarding the workspace. That meant custom properties that you can attach to it, like if you do Python stuff, or you could also um, uh, enable and disable add-ons, for example. But over time, that tab didn't get any anything else than that. It just stayed empty. And yes, you could keep adding things to it, but really wasn't uh, used so much. So in order to save space and to li literally just not have tabs that will be most of the time empty, then uh, there is a new tab here. Uh, sorry, not a new tab, the same tab. It's a tool settings that was already there that got a little of a revamp because <laughs> we had two issues. One tab was always empty, the tool, when you didn't have any tool uh, enabled. And then you would have the other uh, tool, uh, the, the other tab for workspaces, which was also kind of empty. So now they have in Fusion, like a Dragon Ball, <laughs> and they now are a bit more useful. So what is the usefulness is that the in order to not always be empty, it will always show the active tool settings. So the same properties that you have here on the top left, they will be um, displayed here on the side as a panel. So it's like a mirror. So another reason if you want to hide the top bar, now you can completely do it because you always have this active tool here. So you can work with both. And this works in every in every mode. So if you are, for example, sculpting, well, sculpting has more settings, but it has the active tool and then the uh, actual tool. So maybe we could even like get rid of this top 
panel maybe because why would you move at a, a, a thing with an icon only or maybe if it doesn't have any setting it shouldn't just show it it should just show yeah we could we could uh look into it the icons are nice but um they're a bit redundant isn't it in it right okay um that was for the tool settings and there is an extra new thing which i'm pretty excited about is the it, it's another enhancement to the workspaces themselves so workspaces are where you are the spaces where you work and when you work in different parts of the workflow you use different modes if you're painting you want to be in paint mode if you are in sculpting if you want to sculpt right now for example i'm in the modeling um, workspace if i go to sculpting i'm still in the same uh, mode but well now i i i'm using the new feature but i don't know if you notice i'm in modeling here i'm in object mode and then i go sculpting and then i'm in sculpt mode and then i go painting texture paint and i'm in texture paint mode isn't that crazy then if you go to uh, shading yeah object mode that's what it makes sense but isn't it awesome so what if i have a grease pencil object here in object mode then i go to the 2d animation workspace and i'm in draw mode so i can start drawing immediately that is much more powerful than what we had uh, before so before the workspaces will always share the same mode so if you were in sculpt sculpt mode and then you go to compositing it will still be in sculpt mode so it didn't really make a lot of sense this is very very nice because it means that you can really go from one to the other like from one side to the other i didn't mount that partition you can go to from one um mode to the other without really um changing much of your let's see of your scene so everything is done automatically i want to open a file that is not like completely heavy but to warn you that some modes are a bit slow like when you go from one mode to the other depending on the object that you have selected it will take a little bit so for example well here's still loading everything did you see that now the ev shaders are also showing uh, underneath they show here at the bottom in the, in the status bar they show when they're compiling so you don't have to guess when the compiling will end now it's actually showing there so let's see let's let's select um let's enable my here and let's select this little piece here with this shouldn't take that long let's go to sculpting which i don't have it so i'm going to add it here bam wow that was fast hey i, I was warning you for the for the worst actually it was pretty fast okay let's go back to the other one let's select this mesh that it's probably more heavy oh geez yeah this is this is very detailed let's see how long it takes nice i can just some pimples here so the teenager robot nice and then come back brilliant uv editing UV editing is in object mode. Okay, maybe UV, UV editing should be in edit mode, or maybe that's a bit too problematic. Remember, edit mode is also slightly slower sometimes to go in, so maybe it's not good for all of the modes, but this is pretty neat. I actually really like this setting. And um, yeah, this should be already in it. And when we ship the new default.blend, it should already be default for everyone. Let's move on. By the way, we are live. If you have any questions at Blender today, you probably know if you've been around here for a while, but uh, yeah, just ask your questions and I'm gonna answer them after I finish going through this stuff. Um, no, I think I'm, I'm, I'm done actually. Workspace settings, we, um, <laughs> I have all the stuff here, <laughs> um, the notes. Let's see, um, here. Um, workspace settings into tool settings, yes. 
than the add-ons. Well, that's what I actually wanted to uh, mention is that if you're making your own workspace and you want to have it, for example, a new modeling workspace and you want to always be in edit mode, then you can set it up from the um, from the tool settings here and then you can change the mode of this workspace. So I can make it edit mode and then when I go to another and then I come back, it will enter edit mode always. So that's how you keep track of which modes are in which uh, workspace. For that to work on all of your existing modes, so for example, if I want modeling to always be edit mode, I can do it by saving my workspace settings basically. So I change it, for example, here to edit mode and then I, um, the user pref should be quick in, no, I'm actually done here. The save user settings and the workspace settings should be saved there. Hmm, yeah, so let's see. If I save the settings, which I did here, save the settings and I open a new file, let's see the web, wasp bot, then I added my missing workspace because this one doesn't have the modeling one, then it didn't save it. I need to save the startup file. Okay, so let's save the startup file for the time being. And I think I'm pretty much done with this for now. Did I miss anything? No, let, let's, let's go to the questions already. And I'm gonna pump the music a little. Is the music okay? Can you even listen to it? I, I have it in the background just to chill a little bit. All right, let's put some uh, advertisement here on the back. And uh, while we read, <laughs> it's nice advertisement, right? Okay, let's see. All the way to the top until 9 p.m. There you go. Lapis, ah, let's find a song. Yes, sometimes it takes me a while to find a song. I was surprised how fast I managed to set up uh, everything before starting. So Shimon says, um, Shimon, why not use the spacebar as a grouping for of the most useful tools for each editors. Um, well, isn't that for most editor? This is the the. It's kind of the same concept. Now it only shows the active the tools that you have in the sidebar. And as as I said, it we're still this is an experimental feature. I personally would like to have spacebar for playback, so you can play like because shift space, I, I, I am not getting used to it. It takes two keys and spacebar only works on editors that have tools. So if you press spacebar in the properties settings here, it says it gives an error because it, there is no tool. Outliner gives an error. Top bar gives an error. So all the, like a, a, a terminal, for example, if you're in a Python console and you press spacebar, okay, spacebar. If you are a text editor, there you go. You can't find it until you have a text. So there are even the, yeah, yeah every, everything actually, the video sequencer. There is very few editors that have tools. So assigning such a nice key like spacebar and so satisfying to press, it's, uh, we, we need to discuss that. Of course, it will be easy to change it, but it will be nice that it was a change for everything. Next question. Um, is there a way to make the brush, Xdragon ask, is there a way to make the brush in sculpt mode scale when you zoom? So if you zoom in the brush, scale down, and if you zoom, the brush will scale up. Note that I, no, it's like an absolute. You can do that with, uh, I think I answered that last week or it was in the other live stream. Um, you can do that with absolute, uh, with the detail setting, but I don't know if with the size, I'm not sure. So I'm not gonna even say yes or no, but I'm not sure. Um, for example, what I mean is that the thin topo has um, absolute size or brush, brush detail basically. So you, you can um, 
depending on the radius, you have the, the different uh, level of detail that you apply. Next. Let's go here. Magical Cyrus says, will Hialti give an animation talk this Blender conference? I I think, well, actually, uh, speaking of the Blender conference, there was a new uh, Blender conf. There is a tweet from today that, hey, we still have, <laughs> hey guys, we need to remove the pin tweet here. Um, here, Blender conference, there is, a list of talks that have been already approved. So yes, there is UX, Blender for UX design, it's pretty nice. Well, the, the um, Tom Rosen and keynote as always. There's some very interesting ones and there's a lot of community stuff this year. There is the Blender Italia, eh, Blender Italia, French speaking community. There is the German community, I guess, because it, it's always there. And today, this year, for the very first time, there is the Blender Spanish community meeting that I, I will host. I will I will be there hang on, hanging out with other Spanish-speaking people and uh, a whole lot of things. So there is a talk about the interface from William. That's interesting. I might have to be there. <laughs> and the developers AMA, that's amazing. That's the best. So yeah, go check them out. They're in the Blender Conference 2018 presentations. Let's move on. Uh, about Hialti, let's see if Hialti is here. Usually he applies later. Hialti Hammerson, the illusion of animation. There you go. Hialti goes up, yeah, of course. Hialti is a classic. We already know, it's a classic. So um, they, ha they have no place uh, specified yet, but they will be over time. So this is like the very first pass over all the talks that will happen here October 2018 come when will face map be fu fully functional now as it, it seems the auto face map add-on is no longer very cheap with 2.8 bills now because it's not um, no it wasn't official it was like an experimental add-on and uh, it's just a matter of bringing it uh, back I think the code uh, Campbell said once that it's there, but like not, no one really gave it a real try <laughs> to like uh, actually use it and nobody even reported many like errors and stuff. So if you wanna see it grow, like everybody wants to see it grow, but until there is not like a real life use case, uh, it's hard to, to move those um, experimental features um, in. So I would suggest Someone can update the Blender, the face map add-on maybe, and then just start reporting uh, uh, not only issues, but like videos making it and what could be better and not. Just like, just get, get the ball rolling. Let's move on. Miller, is compositing for cycles not working for now? Or is it just, <laughs> I'm just doing something wrong? Well, I, I, well, it's in alpha state, but I, I so far I think it's working. I mean, the the guys are using uh, the Blender Animation Studio uh, for Spring. They are using um, cycles, so there must be a way. I think they're not doing a lot of compositing yet, but it should work. And um, I don't remember anything being broken in that that sense. Oh, by the way, there is a new feature. I'm gonna just show it quickly here. Is the film. Uh, in the color, which I have not a lot of, um, where was it? It's in the developers um, site, developer.blender.org, and it was film curve. Your um, own. Let's see if we can find it here. There you go. This is the patch. So this patch introduces. It was added recently in Blender 2.8 and Master, I think. It uh, introduces film like curves, originated from Adobe. It's an RGB curve where the tone curve is applied on the largest and smallest value. And the middle value is adapted to keep a constant hue as defined by RGB, HSL, and HSV, hue selection value. So yes, go play with it. Film like weighted standard and uh, just, just, just try and find <laughs> a really good use for it. 
it's a very standard feature in other um, um, compositing software. There you go. Have you tried Mastodon? It's like Twitter, but open source. Blender could have its own instance there, and it does. Mas Mastodon social. We still have to make it active, but we made the account. The account is there. There is uh, almost 200. You can be person 200 to be there. And um, I have one, I think, Pablo Vasquez here. Yes, you go. I can. I always forget. And um, I, I have it, but basically it's a retweet of my tweets. And I don't really tweet that often. Um, I mainly retweet. I'm a <laughs> lurker. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I, I have that one. And the Blender one, we we're going to link it to so it will retweet the things. It's hard to maintain two platforms at the same time, but there is this very nice website. I forgot right now that you can link um, Twitter accounts to Mastodon. So you only use Twitter or you only use Mastodon and it uh, goes, to, goes to both. So you only have to update one. Could there be an option to show how much it took an object to update last frame? An object, maybe an in outliner next to the icons. Trying to optimize the scene for animation can be quite frustrating. Could there be an option to show how much it took an object to update the last frame? I don't know about an object, but you you have the debug settings. So if you run Blender, you open like let's let's open a file like this one, like the Waspot. Always opening the Waspot because it's very tiny. It's like it's, it's 50 meg or something. And uh, okay, so let's see. You want to debug this thing, and you can enable. Can I remove that? You can enable the debug settings, debug menu, and you can turn on two five six two hundred and fifty six, and this will enable the um, like the yeah the debug settings, but for like the GPU. So if you're using EV, this is very very handy, and also tells you like how much memory you're using right here how much um, a frame is taking to update so for example if you want to uh, make things a bit faster you can just play with the render settings from here so you go to the render settings and okay disable bloom is it faster from 16 milliseconds now with bloom it goes to at 17 so it is adding so if i remove depth of field and ambient occlusion then yeah, I gained like one millisecond, not great. Volumes, and here you can you can see what to optimize. And the same with geometry, you can start enabling and disabling things from um, basically from the viewport here. So like, let's disable the head. Wow, this is much faster. Three milliseconds, I can enable all this stuff again. <laughs> yeah, and without the head, it's much faster. So it must be the head that has maybe like so the face scattering or something. Uh, anyway, this is one way to optimize your scene. Augusto Cesar says, will be possible to export and oh, by the way, if you want to go back, I always forget, uh, just uh, go and put it back to zero. And if you feel like playing with it, you will going to find crazy stuff like a red or some stuff red, which who knows what the developers are using this for? Hmm. But basically, it's a way for the developers to turn on and off certain settings and not bother the actual uh, Blender usage. Uh, Agosto says, um, will it be possible to export an M Blender EV file to an EXE and send it to a client? Well, can you just use something like Armory 3D then? Because that's more like a game. Like otherwise, what would you send a, an exe, like an executable file? Uh, yeah, uh, just use Armory and make like a turntable with the keys and stuff, and they can run it everywhere, including the browser. So yeah, Armory 3D, or you can use Blend for Web as well. Blend for Web. So yeah. You can do it in the browser, even on your phone is awesome. Thomas, any updates on the 3D cursor? Uh, no, not so far. 3D cursor is still there. The option to control the rotation will be added. 
but um, um, yeah, besides that, there's nothing there yet. Baby Tan says, there is a new fantastic tech that makes ray tracing faster. And yes, I we heard about it. There is already a lot to talk about, it, but uh, not regarding Blender implementation itself yet. Uh, the, the happy haircut. <laughs> Thank you, yes. <clears throat> but yeah, uh, NVIDIA RTX, you should watch the previous episodes. We we talked about it uh, a lot. But basically, the li is good news because the license allows for Blender to use that code and uh, make use of it. But that is long term. Marco Pavanello says, what is the keyboard combination for fly mode? In fly mode is shift tilde. So what? Shift there, you go. shift tilde. So if you are here, you can be here and then you can do shift tilde and you can um, yeah, use the same shortcuts as always. This is a bit of, um, you can still, where, where's the gravity to G for gravity, there you go. So now I have the gravity, I can move around and I can teleport or I can V it for something. <laughs> uh, yeah, that is the shortcut basically, shift tilde or ñ if you're in Spanish uh, keyboard, I don't know, Italian. Don, I um, know, oh let's go here. Caneganti says, hey Pablo, how Manta Float merch is coming? It must be coming very well because there hasn't been news in the developer meetings uh, today, so people must be busy at work. But yeah, it was announced that it would could very likely to join to be part of the beta, so good news for that. Moji Modi, will be have a free rotation scale grab preserve UVs like in Maya? What? Preserve UVs, like the preserve UV tool when you are, um, I hate this triangulated cube, I don't know why I don't make my own yet. Okay, there you go. So the setting for correct UVs, that's say, so not preserve UVs, correct UVs. So when you move it, you could do it. Um, it's not implemented for other modes yet, but um, yeah, it's just a matter of, it should be, it could be implemented, I guess. I don't know how they do it, but it could be implemented. Santa Park says, hello, Pablo. Thank you. <laughs> Render like Octane will have eight times faster ray tracing performance with the new Nvidia card. Will Blender, that's that's PR. Of course, everybody will get it. Will Blender support Nvidia RTX? That's uh, that that's plan actually. Nvidia, I the, I mentioned this a time ago actually that um, that on Twitter. Just gonna leave it here because every <laughs> week the same question arises. Is well, what is this? Somebody tried to render. Koro. Oh, <laughs> hey, looks nice ish. What happened? What did you do to Coro, Stefan? No, kidding. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for using it. But here, let's see the RTX. Where is it? There is a tweet from Ton where he mentions that everything, like it's good news, that it's, it's cool that it's, it could have, there you go. That uh, Nvidia is happy to support us, making it all happen. More details in coming months. So good news. Nvidia has a good uh, record of helping out Blender developers with hardware and time and stuff. Manyway says, can I write an annotation on a marker in the timeline or dub sheet? That could be uh, made visible by mouse over on that marker. Maybe it's just an idea, can a marker have custom colors? And no, no, and no. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it would be a good idea, but no, no, they don't, they, uh, they, this doesn't exist. And can a marker have custom colors? No, but maybe it shouldn't be too hard with an add-on to do because you could attach images to it, I think, maybe. Oh, by the way, speaking of awesome add-ons, in um, Blender today, which I know that domain is down today, but here. There is the screencast keys add-on, not the original one for some reason, but yay and I'm uh, made a new one, which is basically a clone of the previous one. So I don't know why not updating the previous one. Eek. Um, 
but yeah basically it's the same concept of the previous add-on but updated for 2.8 so when you press the keys let's see if i can see when it uses it yeah basically it updates the, the shortcuts that you press and um, it's pretty much the same it's, it's still missing a lot of features for ui and for the mouse and stuff but uh it's pretty nice that people are already making items. You see, you can make items to with 2.8. You can. It's just that you might have to update it again when the Python API changes in uh, this period until the beta at the end of October. <laughs> um, Genius Arts. Hello, please. Can Chris Pencil objects cast shadows? Um, not for the time being, but you like it it's planned basically but no no not right now it's not possible so i would suggest you to trick it just add a like just add a regular mesh and make it not oh oh yeah did you know that it with you can add with shift a in blender today you can press shift a to add a new post because it's blender you know so shift a is the same way so basically in the crisp pencil like the what the team from um, Hero did was basically patent a mesh like the concept was very similar it was basically patent a mesh and put it behind it so the mesh will cast the shadows and that way you could um, yeah you you could have it without uh, you could basically put a, a mesh like this behind it and just with the shape of the monkey basically and uh, you can convert monkeys to curves, so you could be like Gris Pencil to curves. So it shouldn't be too hard, actually. Problem is that if it's animated, it won't be as simple. But um, yeah, this will be the way to do it for now until we get proper shadow uh, catch, <laughs> shadow casting from Gris Pencil objects. Shouldn't the Blender Today logo be a beer? <laughs> yes. Actually, it used to be like about coffee and stuff, but now. Is more of a beer. I mean, you never know what is in there, right? It can be anything. It could be like, um, it could be like a dark beer. What about red topology? The C offset wire got fixed. Not that I know. Um, no, I don't think it's that is fixed uh, right now. But wait for the beta. P. Ramirez, the posted library is not adding new poses. It's just errors when creating a new post because that is an add-on and the add-ons, not all of uh, the add-ons have been updated yet. But there should be one, f I, I think the official one is fixed because people are using it at the studio and uh, the, the library, the post library add-on. But I don't know if it's exactly the same, but yeah, that uh, definitely that will be fixed, but these add-ons are not uh, updated yet. Mobstar says, when is the Gris Pencil training coming to the cloud? And what happened with the cloud update these days? Did you change something with the cloud? Well, 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 speaking of which, there is, well, now there is nothing really new here. Actually, a lot has changed under the hood. We are preparing for a very nice update on the Blender cloud. Um, visually, it will change a little bit. It won't change that much but it like it, overall the system is would be much better there will be features i don't want to spoil you but there will be features so when you watch a training for example if you have spent all your afternoon watching waking the forest then uh, you can it will be marked as watched and you can go for like if you start here in the first one you will be able to watch continue to the next video, come back and have the, like like on YouTube, like it will save where you were and it will have the, you can mark it as watched. So you can have a hundred percent of the Wake in the Forest training done, for example. And uh, that way you can keep record of what the, the, the trainings that you did. Um, very excited about this feature because there's also other stuff coming regarding the Blender ID, Blender Cloud, the development fund. We are all about the ser Blender, Blender services right now. The the web team at the Blender Institute Animation Studio. That is uh, Francesco Siri, Severin Stuvel, and uh, myself and uh, other people working online. But 
more news on that soon. Let's continue. Oh, by the way, all of this is because there will be new training, three new trainings coming to the Blender Cloud. So there is uh, like shorter, maybe making the clouds for spring, making the hair wiggle for the spring animation, uh, open movie animation character and other stuff with EV 2.8, it's gonna be awesome. It will be coming very soon, like this week, there will be one next week, another and the other week. So best time to join the Blender Cloud. Preposterous Pixel says, any idea on when the quick smoke is being fixed? It probably won't take that long, but the thing is, I, as I mentioned, add-ons can be fixed right now, but the more you uh, fix them, now you have to, be, like developers will have to refix them again in the beta. So anybody is welcome to fix the add-on right now and put it up, but yeah, it will have to be fixed. So that's why it is not being fixed. And I say add-on because even though the quick effects are not add-ons per se, they are Python scripts. So when you add them, it's basically a Python script that is failing here, for example, object data, UV layers, require parameter name. Oh yeah, because before you didn't like, for example, this is a very silly change, a uh, silly, a small change in the API. But for example, before you would be, you would be able to do, like, to create a new UV layer from an object and just pass the name as a string of this new UV layer. And that was allowed. But now in the new API, you are required to specify the name specifically. So Blender doesn't have to guess or it's less prone to errors. And it's also more tidy, more clean. But for example, in order to fix this script, developers only have to add name equals explode fade with the name of the variable there. Maybe after fixing that, there is another Kind of, but it's all things like that. There's just the API is being more clean, more tidy. L some things changed in Blender. Blender uh, lamps are not called lamps anymore. They're called lights. So those things, for example, if you have an add-on that plays with the lights, with the lamps, <laughs> now you have to basically search and replace for lamp. All of that will be documented. So you can try your luck now or play around with it or just wait a little bit until the beta. Adv Gamer says, will there be improvements to UV smoothing so that denser areas get more coverage like in the case when UV mapping and character head? There is a talk about that in the Blender conference from forever ago. Um, Blender conference UV. This one, for example, one year ago. Aurel Groover, where are you Aurel? We want that. It looks so awesome. You should watch this, this and uh, it's just, just amazing what you can, when, when you can do with this stuff, but it's not implemented yet, I think. Um, so if somebody wants to propose it or hire even developers to, to implement it will be awesome, but it's just very promising. Okay. Um, Another question, Kresslit says, is it possible to save the history of a sculpt so that it may be exported as a movie, like a time-lapse, if you could add this feature, <laughs> if this feature could be added in 2.8? Um, no, it's not possible at the moment. You can screencast from Blender itself. You can window save screenshot. And where is the screencast setting? Or not? Screen, hey. There is no setting. It was added. It was removed. I'm learning a lot of things. <laughs> well, in 2.7, you could go to window, make screencast, and that is no longer here. Must be an error, I think. There's nothing wrong with it. You could save your thing, your screen. Uh, well, yeah, I would recommend you use a different uh, software for capturing the screen. If you are um, on any platform, you can use something like what I'm using right now here for recording this. <laughs> this is the um, OBS Studio. It's amazing for everything and it's open source, just like Blender. So OBS Studio, it's the most popular one. Everybody uses it. And uh, it works in the little penguin and the Apple and in the squares <laughs> windows 
Well, dope shit. <laughs> yes, I know. I say it wrong. I it. I know. Anyway, I ask will mm -hmm, and timeline become united? Maybe one day, but at the moment, uh, no. Basically, there would be no room for fitting all the stuff if you go to animation to fitting the buttons of the dope sheet like here and the timeline because they are basically the same now even in 2.8 it's even more um, because you can even move things from one to the other and they could live in the same place but you still have in the in, in this editor you still have I, I said this editor not the dope word um, the <laughs> in this editor you have things like group filtering, like very much more ways of filtering stuff. In the timeline, you don't have too many. So you could fill this, this guys, the play buttons here, and then the start end could be in the playback like there are now for start and end. But what what's the problem with them being two different editors? There's just little, they're hiding at the bottom. There is really not much of an issue. And now with the dedicated uh, uh, editors, it's, it's more of a just being picky, I think, because it, it's down there. It's just a, a few play buttons. DDB says, hello, did NVIDIA already help you guys with their new tech? No. Genius Arts, today, hello, please. Can you spend the love cash at that? The same question. Mm, Darren says, is there going to be a page for people that create bills that others can add to Blender so that they're all in one place and we don't have to go looking for them? That place is called graphical.org. You can log in with your Blender ID, the same ID that you use for logging in in the everywhere, in Blender community, Blender chat, uh, Blender everywhere. You log in with your Blender ID, you request the uh, uploader rights, and we give it to you, we grant it to you. It is, um, I'm part of this website too. And this website, believe it or not, it's 13 years old already it's older than blender nation it's older than okay not blender artist because it was elysium at first but it's very old 2005 and it's still rocking yeah it, it could use some updates but graphical.org that we they have tons of people actually well i just i just want to show in case you were not familiar with graphical.org i you can see stats for example this build was updated here it was updated 14 of august wow 14 of august in two weeks ago in two weeks it got 9000 downloads that is crazy 10000 yeah 10000 in total and 9692 since the last update two weeks ago like wow that is a very popular <laughs> build manta flow is going nuts all right let's continue so this is this is what i mean it's a very popular website you should go check it out and download there if you request upload the rights poke me on twitter or somewhere so or poke at graphical.org on twitter you can follow it down here and um you will um yeah you can you can follow it there is always news and stuff and then we'll uh, give you access if you're trustworthy <laughs> let's see Leo Parrot says are pro graphics cards such as Radeon Pro or Quadro better than gaming cards in Eevee um, no for the price no go with gaming cards just GTX AMD it's just go go with the gaming cards they are good for the price and the, yeah much better. You can buy multiple if you want, and it's even better. So, yeah. Anyway, pictures. Any new on the lights? No. No, I mean, no. Oh, okay. I'm running out of time. It's 10, five, five minutes past 10. I will answer five more questions. And sorry for the other ones that got uh, left out. Rappert says, um, can you answer the questions further down in the chat in the comments section under this bit maybe under this video in the chat section 
Um, but I'm, I'm, this is what I'm doing further down. I mean, I'm trying to go as, as further down as I can. Will Irradiance volume work again soon? Update and show data. That should work actually. If it doesn't, we, well, no, we can't report it yet because it's not open, uh, but should be, that should work. Yes. Will that, will it be hard to update atoms for 2.8? No, I already mentioned. Sergey asks, will we have the ability to ch animate text in text objects? If the goal is to have the ability to animate almost everything, is text being considered? Yeah, text is another object, so it will be possible to animate um, anything with that. Which, by the way, the developer working that will work on everything notes, it's coming in a couple of weeks. So good news coming. Um, Rudy. Now that Blender render has been removed, how do we bake height maps? Height maps, since cycles doesn't do it. Um, that will be added eventually, but that no, there's no current way of doing it. And yes, it's on the roadmap because with the removal of Blender to internal, Blender 2.8 should be able to do pretty much everything that it was possible before. So it is it's going to be worked on, but it's not priority at the moment. Priority is fixing crashes, for example. <laughs> in Blender 279, you can switch the visibility of objects driver using drivers. How do you do this in Blender 2.8? Where you can't animate the visibility, you can't. Hmm, like an object. Yeah, you can. They just set the visibility here, and then you add a drive. Well, and then you add a driver. So you, for example, the lamp, and then you com Control D, or you can right click and right click add a driver in the visibility so in blender 2.8 the visibility you control it with this the with the viewport icon and uh, the visibility temporary is for it's with this eye but now in 2.8 you use this this one um, the actual viewport setting all right i will okay two more two more um Shirakawa asks, two new versions of GCC might make the Blender compiling process more difficult than expected. I don't think it's not too new, actually. It's a version that has been around for a while and it might even have better, like, uh, would be optimized for, for newer hardware, newer as in the last 10 uh, years, five years. I bought this t-shirt too. Yes, you got it. You like it. Isn't it, not, isn't it awesome? Is the Chris Pencil special t-shirt that you can get on store.blender.org and then go to swag events where and you can get it there here that's the one. Oh, there's still tickets for the dinner on Friday interesting Red Black says, where is the flatty dark blueberry theme? Flatty dark doesn't appear on the theme list. No, I will I will add it. I I have to add it back. It's my fault, but I want to add it back. I put it for the time being on my GitHub. I know I have it there. I just I use it now for like um for moving things back and forth between work and stuff. So if you go to repositories and then Blender themes, there is the Flatty Dark Blueberry there updated two months ago for 2.8. And somebody updated it for 2.79 actually, it was in Blender OI, I think. It wasn't in Spanish, oh. But if we go here, uh, and it's uh, Flatty, here. This Flatty Dark Blueberry, it's, uh, you just go to search for Flatty, you don't have to read Spanish. And there is a link here to download it for Blender 279. So thank you for to this user. All right, I will. Um, okay, last question. Hi, Paolo. When can we expect multi-resolution to work? Also, can we expect some improvements on the modifier? Yes, and yes, we can expect it very soon. I was hoping last week, but there is new. The the developer that was working on it was working on updating the libraries for uh, preparing because. This multi-resolution modifier will use Open Savdiv, the technology that we mentioned many times uh, from Pixar. Pretty awesome, but in, in, in Blender needs to ship with this new library, which is called Open Savdiv, 
and it was a good time to update all the other libraries too. Now, sp specifically now that um, the 32 bits for Blender 2.8 is gonna be not for the 280, but for 281, it's gonna be deprecated. So it's a good time to update all of this. So yes, it will come back very soon, hopefully this week, but I don't wanna keep saying this week, <laughs> but I'm, I really hope it will be this or the other one. And it will come with OpenSubD. And uh, that's that's a huge improvement. And okay, thank you. Thanks for suggesting the AI card shortcut. Yay! Yes, happy that you like it. Are you happy with it though? Are, are you people happy with the change? Um, what what do you think? Let me know about that. Let me know about the spacebar. I'm very curious about it. Um, let me know about the new icons. Do you like the new icons that Blender is shipping with? So there is no new tool icons here. So I think they're nice and they're color coded and uh, yeah. I will leave to another planet. Basically, I'm gonna sit on the couch until I start the next live stream, which is in 50 minutes. I am gonna do this same show in Spanish. If you know anyone speaking Spanish or Italian that can follow maybe or Portuguese and uh, let, let them know it's, uh, it's called Blender Oi, like Spanish. Oh well, I will leave this place I will let you with a question that I mentioned before, like what do you think about the double A key? What do you think about the space bar for the tool settings? And overall, like the the mode switching for the workspace, I think is a pretty cool thing that will make the workspaces so much more useful. And um, it's it's really shaping shaping up. So very promising stuff. I will rock you. No, <laughs> I, I, I will. Um, we will see each other again in the next week at the same time in the same channel and as always try and uh, if you're, you're wearing headphones watch out because there is something epic coming so in five four three oh no you can't listen to it really let me see if I can make it work I don't know if you're hearing it. You're probably not. That is all. Ciao.